right back in the year 1813. So Shea established a coffee plantation right at this point when he bought this property to one of the local landowners. Here he established his huge coffee estate and he also had the assistance of a famous Haitian woman. The name of the woman was Ursula Lambert. And there is a whole legend around Cornelius and this Haitian woman and supposedly there was an affair between them but actually there are no concrete facts which may prove that whether this was actually true or not. The site, the remains of the, of the house Cornelio owned were declared a national monument back in the year 1981 and now the site is being currently preserved by Cuban archaeologists and historians. But the site is not only Cornelius' big mansions, as you may see in your screens right now. The site is also composed by the ruins of the house which once was a property of Ursula Lambert, Cornelius' assistant, right, uh, on the right of the, of the remains of Cornelius' mansion. This man was an ingenious person and he designed quite an interesting system for the supply of all the water that he needed. Remember that this was the largest coffee plantation in the west of the country and he needed large amounts of water to process all the coffee that he grew in the coffee estate. Uh, there is a river not far from the property and he made a dam and from this dam he channeled the, uh, the flow of water so that he could supply all the needs of water for the industrial processes that he had in the plantation. But the plantation was a self-sufficient establishment because here he produced the tiles that he needed, he also had a carpentry and there were different types of shops to cope with all the needs, uh, particularly of a coffee plantation. Uh, something else, there were 450 slaves. Uh, of course, in slavery and in slave plantations, there are slave quarters. And the slave quarter occupies an area, one of the largest areas of a coffee plantation. Uh, inside in this coffee, the, this place where the slaves lived uh, was a, an enclosed place where Serial. there were the huts where the slaves used to live. And according to uh, historic records, slavery was not as inhuman in this plantation as in other plantations of the country. Uh, in this place, uh, slaves had certain rights, they were paid a certain amount of money, mm. which the slave invested in a small store that there was in this coffee plantation. Mm. There was some sort of uh, humanitarian slave, but remember, slavery is it's also slavery. slavery. Uh, Currently, there is a staff of Canadian researchers from St. Mary's University who are cooperating with the Division of Archaeology of the Office of the Historian in an interesting project which might eventually contribute to the improvement of the current uh, conditions of the preservation now in the site. Mm -hmm. uh, lots of resources are required for the maintenance of archaeological sites like this and possibly via this cooperation project the Division of Archaeology of Havana and eventually the site itself would benefit from the relation between the two organizations in, uh, in both countries. Mm -hmm. uh, now uh, we're, we're entering the uh, we are site entering of the, bears. the slave quarters. See the main entrance of the slave quarters. There used to be railing and rails that enclosed the slaves at night where they used, used, were compelled to live and sleep right after nine o'clock every, every night. Mm -hmm. uh, here you have some views of the Canadian students doing archaeological work and uh, where they uh, would find some of the artifacts that were formed, that formed part of the personal belongings of the slaves that once dwelt in this place. Uh, the site also has a cemetery not far away from the plantation mm -hmm. where uh, the remains of the owner of the plantation were buried back in the year 1937 uh, when Cornelius died, right back 180 years ago wow. in the year 1837, exactly on June the 12th. And there you have a view of the large water reservoirs that he used wow. to process all the coffee. Wow 
that he produced in the plantation. Uh, he had immense water reservoirs, which eventually stopped being used because of, of certain conditions mm -hmm. uh, uh, enforced in the plantation at that time, and also because there supposedly there was a quake and oh. the reservoirs could not be used anymore. Mm -hmm. There were also dungeons. In one of these reservoirs, Cornelio had a couple of dungeons, one for the female slaves and uh -huh. one for the male slaves. This site was also used during the revolution? And uh, right after the time of the revolution, after uh -huh. 1959, of the plantation was not enforced anymore, but this place was used by Ernesto Che Guevara as a commanding uh, center for, uh, of the army on the time of the missile crisis of uh, one uh, uh, supposedly there were nuclear uh, missiles around by the area. Mm. Uh, currently, the place is just uh, an archaeological site mm -hmm. which is being preserved for the education of future generations. Also, a world UNESCO site? Uh, uh, and the, the UNESCO uh, uh, used to provide some money oh, okay. for the maintenance of historic sites in Havana. But now the funds are, as far as we know, are not reaching this project. Oh, I see. That's what I can say. Okay, well, thank Great. you very much.